Do you want to know what makes love grow? What makes love grow? It's half of your deen, said the prophet, peace be on him. Half of your deen. It's part of Islam, increasing your iman. Half of our deen. Half our deen. Half If you notice from my videos, I don't talk about the typical subjects that you hear from other speakers. But rather, I talk about those taboo subjects that most speakers won't talk about. Recently, one topic that has caught my interest is the masjids. Now, when the Prophet established his masjid in Medina, it was a true Islamic center. Unfortunately, most of our masjids today have been limited to just a place of prayer, so if you went on a tour, it would go with something like this. Assalamu alaikum brother, welcome, I will give you a tour of our big big masjid, it's fantastic big, <laughs> okay, so I want to show you the first place, um, uh, it, this is our massive huge uh, prayer area for men, it's very big and um, that's the end of our tour, thank you very much for coming, wait, that's the whole tour? Well of course, are you impressed? You said there is an area for men, but you didn't mention anything for women. Is there an area for sisters? Oh, yeah, 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 we do. We, um, yeah, it's some, it's, no, it's over there. It's a, a small place we have, you know, behind that cu uh, curtain. We put them in that small closet in the back. It says storage. And, um, they pray next to not much room because there's vacuum, cleaning supplies, they pray in there. Well, that doesn't really sound like you have much of an area for women. So, what about activities? What kind of activities do you guys have? Yes, we have many activities. We have uh, five daily salam. We have once a week we meet at Juma and uh, more Salah and then month of Ramadan we have more Salah and then we have Tarawih which is like long Salah but it's uh, many activities uh, uh, that's it okay what about the youth do you have any type of programs for them <laughs> I just mentioned it. Are you not listening? These are the programs for the youth. We have the five daily salah. We have the most Okay, so basically other than prayer, you have nothing else for the kids. Um we have sunnah prayer, you know, that is uh, more salah. Oh, okay. Look, we don't want too many youth in the masjid, you know, because the youth they have so much energy. And, uh, you know, you look at the masjid people right now, most of them are old, you know, not too much energy. And when you bring the youth here, they want, they ha they have want to do activities, they have ideas, they want to do things productive. Ah. <laughs> well, what are you going to do when the old people die? That is no problem because, you know, some of the old people, they will die, but then we have younger people who become old and then they come here and sit where they were sitting right now. And we even have masjid for every group. I'm confused. What do you mean, group? Yes, we have the Arab masjid, we have the Afghani masjid, we used to have South Asian masjid, which used to be Pakistani and Indian masjid, but then they split because everybody wanted to have their own masjid. Then, then now we have Pakistani masjid, Indian masjid, Bangladeshi masjid, this masjid and that masjid. Everyone has masjids, but they all look the same. They're all empty like this one. Joke! Joke? There is no joke during the masjid tour, brother. Joke, joke, double joke! Look at how many Muslims we have in our community. We have a lot. You may not see them throughout the year, but during Ramadan, you're like, wow, where all these Muslims come from? And then during Eid, you're like, wow, where all these Muslims come from? We got a lot of Muslims. But then comes the question, where are all these Muslims throughout the rest of the year? I mean, the masjids are empty. You got a few people here and a few people there. Sometimes you get a line or two lines during regular Salah, and then during Juma you just kind of packed. But that's it! That's it! The problem is that the Islamic Center is no longer a center anymore. 
But the question is, how did this happen? I'm not exactly sure, but this is what I think is happening so far. When a whole bunch of Muslim families come into a new area, they're like a small community. They have everything except for a masjid, so the first thing they do is build a masjid. Now masjids aren't cheap to build, so the whole entire community had to come together. So this is a very diverse community. It's a bunch of people from all kinds of places, from all kinds of walks of life, all coming together to build a masjid, which is really cool. But then as the community grows, they say, we need to build a bigger masjid. So they have fundraisers and they build a masjid and they make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they see this huge masjid, like, wow, our masjid is huge. So with this huge masjid, what are we going to do? We need a board of directors so we can figure out what we're going to do with this huge masjid. So they get all these people and they all vote for each other and this and that, this and that. And these people you never heard of before, they come in to run for election because they like their name, vice president, president, treasurer, whatever that means, next to their business card to say, I'm the treasurer, I'm the vice president, I'm the president of the masjid because I run this huge masjid. So now you got a board of directors, they're all sitting down trying to decide what's going to happen, and then these guys are starting to fight. And they're like, bah, 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 and everyone starts fighting, and they're like, no, 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 and eventually, eventually, one guy's like, you know what? I'm going to go build my own masjid, and I'm taking my people with me! So he grabs all his friends, like, hey guys, come with me! If your skin color matches my skin color, and you're from the same country I am, we're all going to go build our own masjid! Now you got an Arab masjid, a Pakistani masjid, and this masjid, and that masjid, and like, what? What's going on? This isn't Islam. These are a whole bunch of people having their own masjids. And right when you think like, wow, this is so much division within the Ummah, what's going to happen next? It gets worse. Now you have a whole bunch of people that look like each other, talk like each other, and like, wait a second, this is just like back home. And since this is just like back home, we're going to make this masjid just like back home. And you know what that means. We're going to make it like a senior citizen home. And you know what that means? Old people in, young people out. They get on the phone and like, hey, we need to call an imam from back home to come down here so it can be just like back home. So they bring an imam from back home that you can't relate to, speaks in an accent that you can't understand, and gives khutbahs that are not even relative, and you have to sit there like this. On top of that, they lack programs for women, youth, and converts. Then they wonder, hey, how come nobody ever comes to the masjid? But there is a bright side. There are many masjids I've seen that are amazing. I mean real Islamic centers. I see ones that have playgrounds for the kids, basketball courts for the youth, and even clinics. A free clinic that you can go in with volunteer doctors from the local Muslim community that will help you for free. Now I understand that many of the masjids don't have the resources to pull off such ideas, so let me throw out some of the things that you might be able to implement. How many times have you sat in Jumma like, wow, I think I've heard this khutbah before, but I can't say anything. I wish I could just somehow give him a suggestion. Hmm, I got it. How about a khutbah suggestion box? All you need is a box, put the word khutbah suggestion, put it inside the masjid, and people can anonymously put suggestions. That way the khatib can read, wow, I got eight people asking for the same subject. Maybe I can give this topic for next week's khutbah. One of the questions often asked by Muslim youth is, how come we can't date? And you're like, wait a second, there's lots of dates. There's dates during Ramadan. While joking aside, how about a date night for like the parents, not for the kids, I'm talking about married people. What you do is this, we set up the masjid that the people who want to do babysitting, they can actually get paid and they'll watch the kids and then you drop off your kids at the masjid, the kids have fun, they'll have activities and stuff like that going on, you go out with a two three hour date with your wife, go out for dinner, go for a walk, whatever you like come back two or three hours later, pick up your kids, and you're fantastic. That way you don't have to be mom and dad, you can actually be husband and wife for three hours, and then your kids get to be kids, and they can eat dates at the masjid. Another great idea would be marriage counseling training for imams. Most imams have the knowledge of fiqh, Arabic, Islamic history, etc, etc, but they don't necessarily know all the information about men and women and relationships, and all the stuff that you learn as a marriage counselor. But unfortunately, they get bombarded with these questions, and they're flooded every week. Actually, majority of the questions deals with husband and wife issues, ask any imam, and so they'll be great for them to have this knowledge. So imagine how much better it would be for their khutbahs, and their topics, and their stuff, because it'll relate, especially to a lot of the men and women who are going through issues, and that'll be fantastic. Aha, uh -huh, you like that. But wait a second, why does the Imam need marriage counseling training? He already can explain the rights of the men and the rights of the women. Sometimes you need more than just your rights. Imagine your wife is crying. <laughs> and you're like, I need help, I need to go find someone. Who should I go to? Maybe I should go to my attorney. And you drive down to your attorney and your wife is still crying. <laughs> Then you drive to your attorney, you're like, okay, Mr. Attorney, I, my wife is crying, I need help, I need help. And he's like, well, these are your rights and these are her rights and I'll be 250 bucks. Here you go. 
and then you take the piece of paper like, oh, here's my right, honey, and here's your right, here you go. <laughs> and you're like, wait a second, Mr. Attorney, stop throwing papers. Um, I, I know you gave us our rights, which is somewhere back there, but um, she's still crying, I need help. And he's like, well, I can really help you, I just know your rights. Thank you for the 250 bucks. So you can imagine how much more valuable it will be for your mom to have some marriage counseling training because it can help so many couples. How about some youth activities and programs that brings youth to the masjid? That way the youth hang out in the masjid. You want the masjid to be a cool place. Like you set up a basketball rim inside the masjid parking lot or like set up some goals so they can play soccer. There's so many different ideas. You can even set up a volleyball court. People can have this type of stuff on Saturday night, Friday night. And for people who don't want to get all sweaty, you can have board game night and they can have all kinds of fun activities that way. Another great idea would be having family night where you can have families come together and you guys can have a potluck and social event where people can meet each other. So you can have a networking dinner where people in the Muslim community, like business people, can meet each other and talk to each other and that way you guys can do business more with each other. Uh, another idea could be like where you're coming together where just people are looking to get married. You can, I've held marriage events before where I hosted marriage events where people are looking to get married with the Muslim community and need someone to come and facilitate that. Or like I've held workshops before where I have like one of my workshops is called Muslim Personality where I do a personality workshops showing different types of personality types and how you guys can work together, community building, etc, etc. There's so many different ideas, but family night, you guys can do so many different things. Plus if you have some internet savvy people, usually Muslim youth, they can connect the masjid using social media, Twitter, Facebook, email, and that way the, the people within the Muslim community can know what events happen next week, this week. Even a masjid website could be a big, big help. Ideally you want to get the Muslim youth involved because they have both the creativity and the energy to pull this thing off and to make your masjid into a real Islamic center. Now I understand there's many people that want to limit the masjid to just a prayer area and nothing more. But that is not the sunnah of the Prophet In fact, did you know the Sahabas used to actually wrestle in the masjid? Can you imagine what would happen if the Haram police walked in and they saw people wrestling in the masjid? Can you imagine? Sadly, the people who choose culture over deen want to make Islam into a bunch of rituals rather than a way of life. But the masjids, they don't belong to them. They belong to us, the Muslim community. Let us go back to the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather than the way of the people inshallah. So if you do something unique or interesting with your masjid, please share it with us in the comment section. That way we can learn from it and other people can implement it too. By the way, I'm expecting a lot of heat for this video because I often get negative comments whenever I attack cultural people. Cultural people, what I mean talking about is people who are cultural and their culture conflicts with Islam. So whenever you're talking about that, um, they take it very personal and they'll twist ayahs and then twist hadiths and they'll copy and paste things and say, hey, this is the way we're going to run it because that's the way we like to run it. And that's fine, but go look inside the masjid and there's like six people there and it's just you and your five friends and 99% of people don't agree with you. So um, many of us do want to change. We want the Islamic Center the way the Sahabas and the Prophet wasallam used to have it. We want an Islamic Center. So I'm willing to take the negative comments and I don't care. Um, as long as I can make a positive difference, it's well worth it. The only way we can make a change in our Muslim communities is to talk about the issues that are impacting us. And I know I'm not the only one that cares. I'm sure many of you do too. So with that said, inshallah, please share this video with your friends with the hopes that it can motivate others and you have no idea what your little forward button can do because someone sees a video, implements something in the Muslim community that has a positive difference, changes some people in a positive way and that could be amazing, inshallah. And we can share the barakah together. Do you know what I'm saying? This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot.